Um, hello, everyone. I'm very happy and, and excited to, to be here today with you. And um, I'm Dario Macarone, and I'm Chief Marketing Officer uh, at Laureate. Um, as, um, as a marketeer, uh, I love good stories. I love those stories that uh, are able to make complex uh, uh, concepts easy to understand. And as a computer engineer, my, let's say, secret identity, I love data too. And um, I find fascinating where, when uh, visualization of data, like this one, make uh, uh, easy to understand uh, a fact or a trend. This uh, is um, the climate spiral. It's a uh, visualization created by climate scientist uh, Ed Hawking of the... Um, uh, of the um, National Center of Atom uh, Atmospheric Science at the University of Reading for, for NASA. And it shows uh, how year after year uh, the temperature increases. And it's uh, incredible to see and very easy to see for everyone how this is true and uh, how this is uh, really happening. This is called global warming and it leads to climate changes. And uh, global warming and climate changings are real phenomena, and um, they're already showing their uh, effects everywhere in the world. And uh, some of them are uh, right in front of our eyes, and we are getting somehow used to them, uh, such as um, extreme weather conditions or, uh, or wildfires. Uh, just as an example, uh, in these days, uh, a fire is devastating 1,000 uh, hectares of forest uh, in the Pyrenees, not far away from, from us. But uh, our, uh, uh, the effects uh, are farther away from us that, uh, that uh, go unnoticed most of the time that are the most devastating and, uh, and frightening. And um, yeah, I'm talking about uh, droughts talking about floods, talking about uh, melting glaciers. And uh, even if we think they are far away, uh, the, the, the fact uh, is uh, somehow changing this perspective as well. Uh, it's uh, in the headline of news in Italy from last week's uh, a very severe drought in uh, River Po Valley is the main Italian uh, agricultural district. And uh, last week, uh, the melting of a glacier in Marmolada Mountain killed uh, uh, 20 hikers. And a few days after, a uh, whirlwind in, uh, in Cremona killed another person. So it, it, they look far, but they're not actually. And uh, this is quite scary, no? but uh, let's have a look uh, uh, at the causes of that. Um, first, uh, fuel consumption, for, uh, fossil fuel consumption, and the emission that it generates. Um, the, the level of uh, carbon dioxide, uh, dioxide uh, increases by 26% over the last 50 years. And second cause is intensive farming. Agriculture and, and livestock uh, consume every year 70% of the global water resource of the planet. And by chances, 70% is also the percentage of uh, mammals in, uh, in the world that are intended for human consumption. And just in case you're wondering, 26% is humans and only 4% is wild uh, mammals, it means lions and all the animals we, we see in the documentaries. Uh, third is uh, deforestation and desertifications. Every year, we lose 10 million hectares of forest. That, just to have an idea, is three times Switzerland, where we at Loriot have our headquarters. It's, uh, well, it's getting better because uh, um, 20 years ago it was 16 million, but still, still a lot. And this means that uh, many animals lose their habitats as well. Uh, more numbers. Um, these, are, these are quite scary as well. Um, 3.7 million people die every year for uh, uh, direct causes um, by pollution. 
and every year we produce 2.1 billion tons of, uh, of waste. 160 animal species went extinct over the last 10 years. And the last number, when, when I found it, it shocked me because it's incredible. 98% of uh, herbicides or insecticides actually eat uh, the wrong target. So they ended up killing uh, different plants that were intended to, different uh, insects that uh, were intended to, so including insects that are important for pollination, for example. And of course, they, uh, they pollute uh, air, water, uh, the soil, and also the, the food we, we eat. This is uh, uh, quite uh, a scary story, a frightening story, but uh, we all can be part of a different ending. Um, there are a number of uh, action we can take. Main are um, reduce uh, greenhouse emission, save, reuse, and uh, perform, increase uh, water management around the planet, as well as other natural uh, resources, and uh, make sure that uh, uh, that we grow forests, that we preserve the, the existing forests, because they can store uh, CO2 that otherwise it's uh, in the air and, and, and um, produce global warming as well. And of course, preserve and increase biodiversity. There is no plan B. And uh, every one of us, of course, can do and must do as much as we can in our, let's say, everyday life with our everyday choice. But um, we, as uh, IoT and LoRaWAN uh, professional and an expert, we can do most because uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And I'm sure you all recognize the quote from uh, Ben Parker, uh, what he said to his nephew, Peter, before he decided to to become a superhero, Spider-Man. So what are our our superpowers? Not uh, We cannot spin uh, spider webs. We don't have sticky and uh, uh, hands and feet. And we have no super agility and super strength, at least not me. But uh, our powers, our superpowers are the power of, of Laura One. I will, I will list four of them, but uh, as I'm sure you all know them, I, I'll be quick on this, uh, on this part. First of all is, um, is long range. Long range make possible uh, for IoT to reach corner of the globe where uh, it was not possible a few years ago. And through, um, uh, through satellite connectivity, it virtually can reach really every, every inch of the planet. And this is very important as we will see in the following uh, slides. Uh, low power consumptions is very important because uh, it allows the IoT solution to scale. Um, because we do need wire, we are very maintenance cost and, and very low maintenance for a long period of time. And this is really crucial when it comes to, to deploy uh, large scale deployments, IoT solutions. Um, Lora One is very cost effective. We don't have to pay for uh, the license for the frequencies. Uh, gateway sensors devices usually quite cheap. We've seen that there are not maintenance involved. And, um, and moreover, it's not just cost effective, but also the return on the investment is usually high and, and quick. Mm, generally, uh, we are talking about two years for an IoT solution to, to break even. So it's basically at everyone's reach, small companies, big companies, city governments, and uh, NGOs as well. And uh, the, the fourth superpower I wanted to list is probably my favorite one. Around Laura One, uh, during the years, has grown a very healthy, cohesive, and mature ecosystem. And of course, this, uh, the credit also go to the Laura Alliance in this case, because uh, over the years, it's always put 
a big effort to create the condition for this to happen. And the event we are now attending is uh, uh, another demonstration of this happening uh, in a natural and, and strong way. Altogether, these four superpowers allowed LoRaWAN to grow during the year. Uh, over the last uh, three years, the global coverage of LoRaWAN grew uh, nearly 70% and uh, is now present in 170 countries worldwide. And uh, uh, moreover, the high levels of interoperability and, and standardization made uh, it um, uh, simplified adoption of the technology and made it the, the de facto standards in IoT communication, especially at long range. So let's let's see these uh, superpowers in actions. Just to uh, to be clear, the following use case and example are not uh, all backed by Laureate Network Server. It's uh, I did it on purpose. I selected what I consider the most relevant use cases, uh, regardless of the um, the players that are actually re um, releases them, because I think that these must be. Uh, uh, a joint force effort and every player must be involved. So I didn't want to uh, um, uh, take anyone out of this. So let's start from uh, use cases that address directly uh, climate change and global warming issue. Uh, wildfire prevention, uh, flood monitoring, uh, we have solutions that combat desertification. In, in Africa, there is uh, a, a big green uh, wall, let's say, that uh, is uh, uh, closing the way for the desert to expand to south. And this green wall is monitored by, there are, of course, uh, plants, <laughs> just to be clear. And it's monitoring, uh, is monitored by LoRaWAN sensors that make sure that the conditions are optimal for, uh, for it to make its job to stop the desert to, to advance. Uh, glacier monitoring is also very important because uh, uh, melting glaciers have several very, very awful effects. First of all, it releases CO2. Uh, second, it decreases the, the ability for the planet to, um, uh, to reflect light and heat, so get warmer. Then, of course, if glacier melt, the, the level of our ocean increase, and this creates, of course, problems, especially in remote islands, for example. And uh, uh, most of all, also, the, it changed the, the acidity, the pH of the water. The, the water became more acidic, and this caused the, the death of water plants and plankton, which is, which is at the base of the food chain. In, in the ocean, and then, of course, oops, sorry, this involves all the rest uh, of the chain going up. Uh, and then, of course, water uh, management uh, that is, uh, as we've seen, very important. Um, IoT solution can uh, protect wildlife basically everywhere. This is, of course, tends to, to is, uh, uh, long range, uh, satellite uh, uh, connectivity, for example. And so it allows to protect uh, animals from uh, earth to uh, seas and, and skies, rhinoceros, elephants. Just uh, yesterday I read about cheetahs protection uh, solution, uh, reindeer, uh, belugas, which is, of course, as you can imagine, very hard to, to monitor all around. And also eagle and vulture. For example, if you consider this last one, there is a project in, um, in um, uh, south of Spain and uh, Portugal and uh, Africa as well involved that uh, monitor the, um, the um, uh, migration routes of vulture. And why it is important? Because it make us, uh, it allow us to uh, detect the best spot to build, for example, uh, wind turbines and wind, uh, wind farm uh, without um, um, involving and, uh, and create problem for uh, birds migrations. So as, uh, uh, it's that easy. Uh, just 
collect data and take informed decisions. Um, agriculture and farming, uh, as we can see, they're responsible for loads of water usage and uh, IoT and uh, it's, it's making a huge difference there. And um, basically it allows to, have to, to decrease the usage of water, decrease the usage of pesticides and chemicals, and at the same time, increase quality and quantity of the final product. And we have solution basically for every kind of crop from vineyard to sugarcane in Colombia. We have a nice use case there, which is also affecting positively the, the local society and the local farming society. Uh, we have solution for uh, salads, really, really everything. And same goes for farming, uh, cow, sheep, uh, um, fish farming, and uh, also poultry farming. So basically everything. Uh, industry 4.0 today is one of the vertical in IoT that is uh, uh, growing uh, the fastest. And uh, also in this case, we have several solutions that varies for different environments, for different, uh, use, for this, uh, different uh, uh, manufacturing place, different sites. And generally speaking, we can say they all bring more efficiency in the, in the process, in the industrial process. They reduce um, the usage of energy. They reduce the need of maintenance because they can predict and anticipate failure, machinery failure. And uh, they bring then profitability for, for, the, for the companies and at the same time reduce uh, energy consumption and emissions. Uh, condition monitoring, I've, I've listed here a couple of them. Uh, fleet management, for example, in a mining site or uh, or uh, building sites, asset tracking. This is uh, uh, for sure one use case that is uh, growing really fast uh, lately. Predictive maintenance, I've already mentioned it. Uh, uh, industrial control and, and, uh, and process of timeization. Uh, what about uh, cities? Uh, cities are the nerve centers of our society. They are responsible for about 70% of um, global emissions, CO2 emissions worldwide. So every little things we do in our cities can really make a difference. Uh, and when I'm talking about every little things, I mean, really simple solutions such as smart parking that allow us to, to spare some time uh, driving around to look for a parking slot or a smart lighting, uh, waste management, allowing uh, the, the um, collector to know where, where a bin, when, when a bin is ready, when uh, it's full and ready to be collected. So spare time, optimization of the process, uh, position gardening, metering. This is uh, a huge uh, vertical as well. And uh, all these solutions put together create a huge impact, not only in terms of environment, they reduce energy consumption, they reduce emissions, but also the quality of, of the life of the individuals, of the people that live the cities increases. And this is very, very uh, beautiful. And everywhere already they should have uh, implemented this solution because they are very easy. Um, altogether, uh, considering just the, um, uh, the array of solutions I've mentioned and considering also the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals uh, related to environment, uh, I've seen that the solution that, that I mentioned basically already contribute to, to the reach of 8 out of 15 goals. And of course, other IoT solutions in other fields, in other areas, contribute to more goals. And what I realized is that uh, uh, really our superpower, uh, human superpower is, uh, is data. Uh, it's like uh, spider senses, going back to the Spider-Man metaphor, that allow us to anticipate problem, to um, uh, avoid that they occur or to act appropriately when they occur and, and to act wisely. And um, uh, and the Internet of Things today, uh, such as LoRaWAN as well, of course, make uh, uh, data data within reach of everyone, everywhere in the world. And so 
starting from tomorrow, I know that every one of us want to uh, make their effort to grow the, their own company, to create more business uh, uh, for the company. And uh, But from tomorrow, when uh, you go out there and make your sales pitch, remember that you are not just uh, selling an IoT solution or a product, but you are also contributing um, to to a better future for our planet, for the living creatures, and for the next generation. Because the time to act is now, and uh, with great powers, really comes great responsibility. Thank you very much.